So in addition to my other work, I'm also a member of a group called the Free Art and Technology Lab, which is a group of artists, engineers, and lawyers who work in this space in between open source and popular culture. Our goal is to inject free ideals into the mainstream and spread awareness of a lot of the issues that are challenging people on the internet today. Google is an awesome company. They make awesome products. I used all of their products, I think. I use Gmail, I use YouTube, Gchat, Google Voice. But the real business is advertising. They make all of their money on advertising. They collect all of this data from me, my email, my traffic, and they use that to target ads against me that are more relevant and outperform other ads on the internet. This is something that's kind of easy to forget, I think. This is an employee of Google. He was recently fired for digging into people's chat logs and their Google Voice calls. Uh, these weren't just any people, these were teenagers. And so this was kind of disturbing to me. Uh, sorry. And I know that this guy was a bad apple. Google publicly stated that this is only the second time that this has happened. You know? And I've got a lot of faith in Google. I trust them with a lot of information. But it made me start to wonder, you know, just how much data are they collecting about me? And where is it going? Who is responsible? What happens to our data on the internet? This is a Wall Street Journal infographic documenting the growth of Google's products over time. It's pretty cool. You can see in 1998, they just had search and expanded into all these other areas. I use almost all of these. Um, I'm sure almost everyone in this room does, too. And it just gets me thinking, you know, uh, where does this go? I've, I've, I've picked this company to give all this information to, um, but w why? Uh, why do we trust companies? If you're like me, you've kind of equated your privacy with your identity, um, your name and your address. Um, but it turns out that your identity is sort of the least important part of who you are. Um, Take, for example, AOL user number 71139. Uh, in 2006, AOL released a huge amount of anonymized search data for 650,000 users. Uh, a documentary was made about this user, AOL user number 71139, because as you read her searches, you actually unfold this story of a middle-aged, kind of obese woman who eventually has an affair falls into a huge depression, and dreams of moving to Alaska. The names have been removed, but names don't really matter. So I, made, I wanted to make a project about this that sort of helped me track what was going on on the internet. Uh, specifically, I made a browser add-on that's called Google Alarm, which detects whenever you're visiting a web page that somehow sends data back to Google. Even if you're not on a Google website, you're looking at websites that have YouTube embeds, or Google Analytics, or Google Ads. Google Ads are everywhere. And so I wanted to make a very invisible experience very visible, something very intangible more tangible. And this is what it's like. And those are Google websites, but this is my blog. Yeah. I'm sorry, guys. So, uh, and so I found out that almost 80% of the websites that I visit day to day somehow send data back to Google that they could use to track all of my websites. They've got all my email, they know all the videos that I love, and they know all the websites that I visit. So what kind of responsibility do they have? Like, what is their policy for collecting all this information, right? Because Google, you know, uh, they got a great candy color logo, like what is, what do they do? Um, I think it's hidden somewhere in here. Um, this is a huge amount of text. This is their terms of service. This isn't even their privacy policy. Their privacy policy is another 14 pages. Um, it's almost like they don't want us to understand it. Um, I, I, I don't know anybody who's ever read this. Um, I, I will never read this, I'm sorry. Um, I, I understand schematics and pictures, and I think that I'm a normal human. And I know that they're targeting these ads, but I'm really curious about what else they're doing with this information and what they can do with it. So I really like this project by uh, Aza Raskin. It's called Privacy Icons. He's a designer here in San Francisco. And the idea was take all of this horrible text and make it into something that people can understand. 
Um, I think that there's some really interesting icons in here. Um, this is where spam comes from. Uh, this is annoying. Uh, this is more dangerous. This can put you in jail. Um, this might not really be that important to you. Uh, statistically, you're probably a rich white person if you're in this room right now. Um, you are not an Iranian blogger. You are not a Chinese dissident. You are not somebody who is afraid of their government because it, it's easy to forget that uh, corporations need to cooperate with governments in order to make money. This is Shi Tao. He's a Chinese journalist. He's serving 10 years in prison for sending an email through his Yahoo Mail account. Um, Yahoo turned over all of his personal information and all of his email records um, without even asking what it was for. Um, there was no hesitation. They simply cooperate. Um, and so I, I wonder, you know, where are, are all these things going? And so the Second Amendment to the U.S. Constitution, I think, is really interesting. Um, it's about guns, right? It's uh, about like the right to bear arms. Um, I don't actually think that it is. I think the important part is to look at why you need guns and why in the 18th century the founding fathers felt that they needed guns. And that was to protect themselves against tyrannical government, which was run by men who are fallible. And I think that that was very relevant in the 18th century. But in the 21st century, the way that we defend ourselves is with our communication systems and with our information. And we're not really defending this anymore. Um, and this is why, as part of my work with the Free Art and Technology Lab, we're launching an initiative called the Fat Cloud, which is, uh, we hope to be an incubator. Um, we want to help foster a new generation of open source, large-scale, turnkey, highly transparent web applications that people could use as alternatives to these other things if they're concerned about their privacy, if they're concerned, if they're at risk. There's a, a gradient of risk associated with giving up your information. And for most of us in this room, that may not be that important. But one day, it might be. And so we're in the process of raising funding in order to provide free servers for these projects because open source software has struggled. Uh, the open source community is very productive but it's very hard to make a search engine. It's very hard to make Gmail, make YouTube, things like that, because they're very, very expensive. They're used by lots of people, and it requires a very long-term commitment. But this is an issue very near and dear to my heart, and so it's something that we think is worth pursuing. And so uh, if you were doing work in this space, we would love to talk to you. We're looking to help foster awareness of this problem. We're looking to help raise money in order to fund these things, because it is a very expensive proposition. Uh, thanks again. Um, if you're interested in the project, please follow up on my website, jamiedoves.com, or on the uh, Free Art Technology website.